So first of all, uh, let's give a big shout out to the organizers for this wonderful conference. And also want to thank all of you for you know, sticking it out till the very end. So let's get started. Uh, how many of you have heard of Kaggle? Okay. And how many of you have participated in a Kaggle contest? Okay, some of you. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about today is you know, how you can conduct your own sort of Kaggle contest at your organization, you know, how it can benefit you, and give you all sort of the tools to go about doing that. So, uh, yeah, like I said, we, I'll go through the motivation, you know, why you should do something like this, how it can benefit your organization, go through sort of the steps to do it. And this talk comes from like a contest that we conducted at AppNexus uh, late last year. So it's based on our personal experience and we are going to ro roll it out again. So it's sort of our learning and our experience with this. So a little bit about me. Uh, my background is in physics. I worked after doing like a PhD and a postdoc in physics. I switched to software development, did that for many years. Uh, then was a technical uh, project manager for several years. And after I joined AppNexus, you know, I, uh, I saw this field of data science emerging. And I said, OK, you know, uh, this is something that I can sort of do the things that I had done several years ago. Uh, I took some online classes, and you know I was lucky enough at AppNexus to switch uh, to doing data science, and I really enjoy that. So let me talk a little bit about AppNexus. Uh, we are the world's largest independent ad tech company in the sense that you know we don't like Google and Facebook are much bigger, but they have their own sort of publishing. Uh, services, whereas we are independent. Uh, we have our headquarters in New York, around 1,000 employees, uh, about 40 in PDFs. Uh, we are really a big data company in every sense of the word. Uh, we process 250 terabytes of data on a daily basis. And there are over 11 billion transactions for ad impressions that we process. And more importantly, the company has a culture of learn and teach. And that's one of our core values. And we do sort of an annual uh, company-wide hackathon. And uh, this will have some meaning later on in the talk. So, so why should you do uh, you know, a data science contest? Like, like since all of you are here, I'm sure you, you, know, you all agree that this is sort of a golden age for machine learning and AI. And it's very important that you know, the knowledge of data science and machine learning should not be restricted to you know, just the data scientists in your organization or you know, uh, any specific group. Uh, so you want everyone from your company to be sort of thinking from a data-driven uh, point of view, be data literate. Uh, also, you know, you, if you have this knowledge sort of spread out, you can have machine learning design into the product and service. So it's not something that's an afterthought, you know, that you're patching at the end. And like some of the talks we've seen before, you know, you can, if more people are aware of machine learning and data science, then you can remove some of the bias that can invariably creep in. And additionally, you have sort of, if the engineering team is familiar with sort of the data science tools, then it's sort of shared responsibility. It's not just like the data science team that has to keep evaluating how the algorithm is performing, how the models are doing. It's sort of shared across a wider set of people in your company. And finally, like a side benefit, it, you, know, you are sort of creating your own sort of internal pool of data science talent at your company. So there are many ways that you can go about expanding uh, data science, machine learning, knowledge at your company. Like there are some traditional sort of ways. And some of the big companies like Google and Facebook, they have their own uh, you know, in-house uh, data science university. But this is not something that's sort of feasible for a smaller company. And there are other options. And we have 
tried some of these is to sort of create internal study groups or you know, have uh, some sort of mentoring or coaching by a data science team of uh, people taking these online classes. So these are some of, uh, and I think some of these classes have been mentioned a lot. Uh, so the machine learning class by Andrew Eng is sort of the classic. A lot of people got their start into machine learning because of that class. Uh, then uh, this was the intro to deep learning was the class that we sort of took at AppNexus when TensorFlow was very new. This was kind of our introduction to TensorFlow. And then this blog post, you know, from Andre Karpati got us sort of started on reinforcement learning. And there are other, the deep learning textbook and the mining of massive data sets. These are other, we kind of had courses or sort of study groups surrounding these books. Uh, however, you know, all of those things are good, but uh, if you do a data science contest, you know, that has, in terms of training a wider audience, I think that has some aspects that are missing from the other ways of doing it. Uh, there are studies that you know, have shown that if you have a contest and like a competitive element, then that enhances your sort of interest and keeps you sort of motivated. It also makes sort of the process more effective and fun. And secondly, you can have, you know, based on how you structure it, you can have people across different groups within the company collaborate and work on the project. And like Kaggle, in a sense, is proof that you know, they, they have built sort of a thriving data science community based on you know, people participating in contests and sort of developing their resume or their careers based on that. So a little more on Kaggle. Uh, so this is like the crowdsourcing platform for data science competitions where you, know, you have both amateurs and professionals competing to produce sort of models for predicting data sets that are actually uploaded by companies and there are prizes, there are cash prizes to the winners for some of the competitions and big cash prizes. And so in addition to, Kaggle is more than just sort of the contest, they also have a lot of public data sets, they have a thriving community uh, and there are lots of resources for you to get started. But the main thing is the data science contest. And uh, they have, uh, they also provide a means for, you know, for companies to sort of host a competition with Kaggle. And, but then there is like a fee associated with it and, you know, you may not want to go that route. But that is an option. So they have some other, so if you're, if you're wanting to do sort of your own internal data science contest, then there are a couple of ways you can go about it. Uh, like if you have loads of money and you know you can sort of put out a competition and award prizes, uh, then you can just have Kaggle host it for you. Uh, another, some other ways you can do it is what Kaggle calls the in-class uh, contest. These are sort of restricted contests where you can restrict who participates in the contest, but you can't really, you know, your problem and your data is sort of open to everyone. And that's not, you know, something that uh, many companies can, you know, you don't want to have your data set. Maybe if you can if some, in some way obfuscate the data set and make it available, but maybe you don't want to do that. Uh, and then there are other contests that you can use, in a sense, for training, but they all have their drawbacks. So, you could do sort of a live Kaggle contest, you know, you could participate, you can have sort of teams within your company participate in an active, like a live Kaggle contest and form groups around it. Uh, but then you don't have any control over the timeline. It's like when the contest starts, it's like two months, that's when you have to get your team together. And it's not really an effective way to sort of get people trained in machine learning. And it may work for people who have already have a lot of data science experience, uh, but otherwise it's not, not a very good way to train people. S one approach that you could use is to you know, use some of the research contests, and there is quite a bit of those right out there on Kaggle. These are contests that have been there for a while, so a lot of people have analyzed the data, uh, and those can be sort of good training grounds for you know, using. And we have actually done this. 
So there is like a very popular contest on Kaggle for many of you, at least for me it was the first contest I participated in on Kaggle and they have over 11,000 teams you know, that took part, that's the Titanic contest where you have a data set, uh, a labeled data set of people who survived the disaster and then you have to, a test data set where you have to predict you know, who might have survived from that test data set. So we have actually used this and you know, that, that's, that's an option also. But I think, and what I'm going to talk about is you know, how you can go out rolling your own. So this has a bunch of kind of advantages. First of all, you have people working and crowdsourcing you know, within your company. They're working on a problem that's important to you. You could you know, have a brand new project or you could use it to kind of improve an existing product. And it also, uh, you're using your internal tools and your internal data. So it's not some sort of problem that, you know, it's like a toy problem or it's using data that's sort of totally unfamiliar. It's your domain, your data, your tools. And that's, that's what we did. So a few more things about, you know, problem selection, just kind of uh, advice from what, and experience from what we had as we went around this, uh, conducting the contest. So, like I said, the problem should be relevant to your company. Uh, we, to start with, you know, it's like supervised learning, as has been mentioned through many of the talks, is where, you know, I think that's the best way to get somebody trained. That's sort of the tried and true uh, machine learning uh, subfield. Uh, where it's easier to get started. And so that's, you know, you, you want to go for a supervised learning problem with a labeled data set, uh, something that you can easily obtain within your company. And also in terms of the analysis, you want to start with something that you can do without specialized hardware. You don't want to select a problem that will require like GPUs or, you know, uh, special hardware needs for analysis. And some of the important other things are, you know, you need to have some way to rank the submission. So you need to have, you need to identify a metric that you're going to judge the teams on. Uh, and in Kaggle, in, on those contests, they have, you know, that's one of the things that you see up front as to what's the metric and, you know, how are you being uh, ranked. So that, you need to have that well defined. And if you're, ex if you're trying to improve an existing product, then you probably have some baseline metric already and then you can, you know, you're trying to improve on that. So in terms of the rules, we, in our contest, we kind of stayed with the Kaggle rules. Uh, you could, Kaggle has a limit on the number of submissions that you can make on a daily basis. Uh, we sort of relaxed that, but uh, other than that, we stayed with, with the rest of the rules. So one key thing, and I think this is something that you have to make the call, is like how to, you know, what's the appropriate length for such a contest? And if it's too short, then, you know, like, people don't have time. Uh, you can't really do it as like a weekend hackathon. You need people time to sort of absorb the material. It has to be over a period of several weeks. But if you make it too long, then after the initial, you know, two or three weeks, people lose interest. So in our case, what we did was we ran it for about four weeks. Just, we started just prior to our company hackathon, which is like the Monday and Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So it was sort of a lead in into that. Uh, in terms of data set size, uh, you know, you want to use, you don't want a very big data set. You want something that your, the teams, the participants can sort of train a model and iterate quickly. And you do want to not sort of pre-process and clean it. You want to have it, you know, make, keep it uh, as it is, like keep it real world. Don't do a lot of cleaning and pre-processing. That's what, those are some of the things that you want your uh, participating teams to learn. So in terms of infrastructure, one of the key things was we wanted to have people get started very quickly. We, a lot of times, you know, it's like people get bogged down in just setting up their development environment. So we wanted that to be as painless as possible. So they are like ready to start. Like you do a one hour uh, sort of tutorial session and you know, during that they are ready to, to, to go on. 
And we also wanted to sort of try to emulate the environment that your data science team or you know, the team uh, that, that's kind of used within your organization. So in our case, you know, it was Python and Jupyter Notebooks. Those are kind of the standard tools that we use. And so that's what we chose. And you, know, you want to encourage whatever is, is used at your workplace. And uh, Docker was the environment, you know, kind of the virtualization environment that we used, and I'll talk about that. So how, I'm sure most of you have used Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, in case you haven't, you know, they have, that's sort of the standard way of doing uh, sort of data science. Uh, so they allow you, you know, to run code directly from the browser. Uh, you have, in addition to Python, you can use many different languages. Uh, you can not just run code, but you can sort of do visualizations and stuff like that. You also have access to sort of a file manager and terminal. And some of the best features are in addition to just you know, running your code, you can sort of package it with uh, text and sort of create a publication-ready report out of it. So that you can use the same notebook in which you did your analysis to communicate the results of your analysis. And, the, uh, and on top of that, you, know, you can share notebooks and other people can kind of take them and build on them. So, so that's, with, for all of those reasons, you know, we said let's, that, that's what we wanted to use uh, for the contest. So Docker allows you to basically uh, build and uh, so, sort of take some code and run it anywhere. So that's sort of a one sort of sentence explanation of what Docker does. It's sort of a virtualization environment that lets you do that. And in our case, uh, you know, like I said, we wanted to have something that people can uh, start very quickly. So you have a Docker client for you know, Mac or Windows, and they can just take a, a sort of an image that we provide, and they can run and get started on their own machine. So uh, in the, even here, you have a couple of options. Uh, so uh, you can have sort of the, these Docker images running on a server. And so if you have access to a server machine, there is a tool called Jupyter Hub that will allow you to sort of run multiple uh, Docker instances from that server. So all of your participants can sort of just connect to uh, that sort of centralized uh, Jupyter Hub server. And that's some of the classes, I think the deep learning.ai, some of the online MOOCs actually use this. Uh, another option, and if you don't have access to sort of some a central server like that, you can just have the participants run Docker from their client. And there are clients for Mac, Windows, Linux, pretty much every platform. And if you search for Jupyter Docker stacks, uh, they have ready to run Docker images. And these are sort of set up with everything that you need. So they have a whole category of images. Uh, I, I would suggest starting with like a data science or TensorFlow, but you can see what packages are in included. But everything is pre-packaged and just ready to run. And when you start that, uh, that Docker container, then you have, basically it even starts the Jupyter server, so you have uh, instant access to the Jupyter notebook. So, th so that's, for our uh, contest, we, you know, we didn't have sort of a central server with Jupyter Hub, so we actually created our uh, sort of image based on the data science image that we got from Jupyter Docker stacks. And so you can easily extend that image. It's pretty, you know, there's like a Docker file that has a pretty straightforward syntax. And you can add any custom packages to it. So the other packages that you think, uh, Python libraries that you think your teams will need uh, to participate in the contest or any custom code, you can easily package it into uh, that Docker image. And the data set also you could you could package with that image, 
Or if you want with Docker, you can mount external storage. So we actually choose to you know, not include the data with the image. But that, that's, you could always do that. And once the participant starts that do their Docker uh, container, they can, if they choose, they can install additional software if they want. So as, as long as the container is running, that software will be available to them. So in addition, so this sort of ha sets you up with the infrastructure so that they can run Jupyter Notebooks. But as, you know, one of the key things, and that's, where, that's what you have with Kaggle, is like a way to submit and get scored for your whatever prediction that you made on that problem. So we needed some sort of a tool that would allow participants to submit those predictions and you know, get a score. And when we first started looking at this, we thought, yeah, of course, there would be you know, some off the shelf. You, know, you just do a GitHub search, and maybe you'll find a tool that does this. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't any. Uh, there was one you know, not on GitHub, but we found somebody who had like, a code written in Haskell that does this. But we could not get it to compile. And probably somebody was trying you know, a side project or something. So we said, OK, let's just, you know, I think this is not something very complicated. We can probably create our own tool that kind of mimics uh, sort of the Kaggle submission interface. So I'll talk about that, but there are some simpler options that you could use. So if you have used Jupyter Notebooks, there's also like a package called Jupyter Dashboards, and they provide a bunch of widgets that you can embed inside your notebook. And you could sort of create a submission app using, using that. Uh, you could also, uh, and this was one of the things we sort of found out after we conducted the contest, was that a lot of users probably didn't care about the submission app at all. They would have just you know, preferred to just submit from the command line. So, so those, those are some other options, and those would be probably simpler to implement. So what we end up using was a library called Dash. And Dash is from the same people who have Plotly, if you use that library for Python. And this allows you to build sort of very nice web interfaces with fancy widgets and everything in Python without you know, you don't need to know any JavaScript. And it uses React and Flask underneath. The only limitation from our perspective at the time when we ran that contest was uh, the free version of Dash does not support any LDAP authentication. So essentially, you can't have you know, the users log in when they make their submission. So you could potentially submit for a different team or something. So this is sort of our app uh, you know, that we used when we, we, we called this contest Unsupervised Machine Learning. So it's a pretty simple app. You know, like I said, since we could not have people log in into the app, we had to have them actually select what team they were submitting from. And uh, you know, we wanted they, they can provide some sort of a description for their submission, and then they just upload the file their predictions. But then as soon as they upload their submission, we have uh, sort of, we score them and then present their scores as well as like direct them to a leaderboard where they can see their ranking. And this is similar, like when you, the same thing that you see kind of on a Kaggle submission that you get your sort of score and leaderboard ranking right away. So, uh, we had set up, along with that submission app, like a public leaderboard. So the way Kaggle does this is, uh, and you can change this. Uh, so the public leaderboard is scored on like a fixed 20% sample of the full data set, and that's what you see right away. And so you get that immediate feedback on, on your model performance. And having that sort of visible public leaderboard is what keeps the competitive elements. So as soon as you know, a team makes a submission, they see how they stand compared to the other teams. And then there is like a private leaderboard that you could calculate right there and then, because all you're doing is you're actually scoring them on the whole data set. 
But with, with Kaggle, you can kind of choose which uh, data set to use for the final submission. So you, if you have made like a dozen submissions, you can choose which one to use uh, for the final ranking. So we, we, we didn't really do that. We just ha had them you know, graded on their best submission. So this was sort of how the public leaderboard looks like. So this is something that's visible as the contest is running. So this allows us to see you know, how many submissions have been made, when was the last time somebody made a submission, a particular team made a submission, what their score was, and what their rank was. So in addition to doing all of this, it's very important to have some kind of a support structure for the teams. So we, when we kicked off this whole contest, we had a couple of tutorial sessions to introduce the teams to uh, Docker, setting up, you know, although it's, it's pretty painless, but uh, sort of have them you know, go, go through the steps of starting a do the Docker container, uh, connecting to the Jupyter Notebook, uh, run through how the notebook works. And we also provided them a bunch of starter notebooks uh, so that you know, they had things, uh, all the steps that to get started with uh, running a basic model. And some of the things we, like, we did have a Slack uh, forum and weekly office hours. Some of the things we thought since then would be to actually have mentors work with the teams. We, d we didn't have it during the, our contest, but something we thought about if we, when we do it the next time. But we did have, you know, we provided them with a bunch of starter notebooks, and we had uh, sort of set up a curriculum of what we would do in terms of the training sessions in, uh, and go through uh, how to set up sort of a train validation test set, how to uh, set and adjust hyperparameters, some of those things that we wanted them to be familiar with. So, and finally, you know, you want to, since this is a contest, you do want to have a ceremony, an award ceremony, and a party at the end of it. So we, we did that. This is also a place where, you know, the teams can share their models, uh, uh, their learning from the contest, uh, and this is sort of the opportunity for uh, people from the company at large to kind of uh, learn from, from the experience and from the knowledge that the teams acquired. So this is also, you can, for, for us, it was a way for us to kind of retrospect on that, what worked, what didn't work, and get feedback from the teams. So going forward, you know, we will be uh, open sourcing the tools and the code that we use to conduct this contest. And we are planning another uh, contest later this summer. So uh, I hope I have inspired you, you know, that to do something similar, uh, this can be really wonderful for getting people trained at your company. And if you're looking, you know, if you want, have questions or looking for some more details on how to go about doing this, uh, feel free to reach out to me and ask any questions. Yeah. Thank you all.